back. Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are working on Mali, the Turbo Miata. We are redoing the complete cold side of the turbo system. New intercooler, new intercooler piping, and hopefully, a new intake by the end of the day. Molly is getting a new motor, a built 1.6, which is going to be capable of much more power. In order to make that more power, we have to make more boost. And more boost means more heat. So, in order to keep intake temperatures good with more boost, you need a bigger intercooler. So, we are getting rid of the Flying Miata intercooler and replacing it with a decently larger Mishimoto black intercooler. Here is the old intercooler, right? Here's the new boy. This thing is much, much taller a little bit wider and the same thickness. So it's gonna be great. Plus it's black and we all know that black intercoolers stay cooler, right? I think uh, I think Mighty Car Mods tested that. Well, I know they did. I just don't remember what the result was. The intercooler piping that came with this kit is all rubber. It's all silicone. It's bad for a couple of reasons. Silicone can break. If you're making lots of power, it can be cut. Silicone expands slightly under boost. So there's probably a little bit more lag with the silicone intercooler piping. The worst thing is that silicone rubber absorbs sound. With a complete silicone intercooler piping, you don't get as many cool induction noises. Here we have a big box of two and a half inch intercooler piping. I'm going to be fabbing up some new intercooler pipes with this aluminum. We'll see how that goes. I haven't welded aluminum much. The other day I actually spent the entire day practicing and I got pretty good. I was practicing on some thin aluminum so I kind of get the hang of it. And would you look at it? You see them beads? Pretty good if I do say so myself. So with this new system, we should have cooler intake temps, we should have better noises, and we should have better spool. So it's a win, 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 and better durability. First step of the process is to mount the intercooler. Then we have to make the new intercooler piping, and then we make a new intake if we want to, and it's all done. Ladies and gents, let's get started. Huge thanks to Mishimoto for sponsoring all these awesome parts for this video. If you guys need any cooling related products, intercoolers, radiators, oil coolers, go check them out. So since we're in here working on turbo stuff, I went ahead and took off the coolant lines for the turbo. This is where our coolant leak was coming from. And right here was the culprit. This was the inside line, the line that was pretty much impossible to reach while all of the uh, piping was still in the car. The leak wasn't coming from the banjo bolt. It is actually coming from the hose. It's just totally crumbling. So I just cut the line back to where it was still good. I'm going to get a new hose clamp and put it back together. But you can see that this, the end of this line just totally destroyed itself. So that was the leak. Well, now that everything is out and you guys are caught up, let's go ahead and start mounting this new intercooler. I'm gonna try. Wrecking. I want to see how it would fit if I use the old mounts on modified fit like that, which is way too low. That would make the inner corner the lowest part on the car, which obviously isn't good. So we have to just shorten that top mount so it raises the inner corner and then make a new uh, bolting thing. This thing sucks. That one sucks more. Why are all my drill bits just ruined? What? What is this? What? What? Just some sort of cruel joke? Eventually, I found a drill bit that wasn't dull as shit, and I made this. So I'm reusing the top mounts from the Flying Miata kit. Stored them, drilled new holes, and then I made this new bottom plate that fits the uh, the new intercooler. So we'll bolt this up. One problem already. These need to be bent a little bit more.
It's already looking really sweet. I'm going to cut these tabs off the bumper because they are worthless and they're really ugly. I'm also gonna cut a little bit into the core support. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna weld some tabs onto the radiator, some aluminum tabs that just go straight into these bottom bolts. It'll be the first uh, aluminum welding on the car. Should hopefully go decently, although it is upside down, which oh, no, that'll be interesting. You guys saw it for yourself. I was doing great welding aluminum. Just a little bit harder when you're underneath. I might not be able to do it. Uh. This is the type of shit that just gets me so frustrated. I know I can weld aluminum really well, just sometimes I just can't figure it out. And it looks like trash. It actually is holding on this side, so I'm just gonna tape this side and make the intercooler piping. Whenever I can't do something, it gets me really frustrated too. Um, and then I lose motivation and I just don't feel like doing it anymore. I'm significantly less motivated to do this now that I spent all this time making these dope mounts and I can't weld them because I'm just bad. <sighs> wow, dude, look at those welds. Oh my, oh my God, that's so good. Now we're starting on the cold side from there to there. There's something up with this aluminum. I don't know what it is. It might not be clean enough, but I just couldn't get a clean weld pool. It just keep, kept uh, like kind of bubbling and just corroding and just, it was terrible. I thought that something might've been wrong with my tungsten, but then I go onto this and lay a perfect dime. So something's up with this. I cleaned it so much. I'm gonna clean it more. Both of that helps, but I can't weld it right now. Cause it just, it won't, it won't weld. Physically won't. Why the fuck? Ah! Do the ground isn't good enough. Ow, what? I got like electrocuted. What the fuck is happening?
this aluminum must have feelings because as soon as I threw it, it started welding fine. I literally didn't do anything else. So I, I don't know what, it's just the weirdest thing ever. Boom, 360 degrees, welded. Oh wow, there's a big hole in my glove. That's probably dangerous. I contacted my friends at Eastwood. They sent me out this bead roller. It's actually not designed for intercooler piping. It's designed for sheet metal, but it does work for two and a half inch and up bead rolling. Put the pipe in, tighten this down, start bead rolling. I have to make sure the thing stays right in line, which is hard, because it kind of just likes to do whatever the frick it wants. The results are good. You can see a nice bead in there. Maybe did this one a little bit too big, but that certainly ain't coming off. The other thing that I got from Mishimoto, Mishimoto is a colder thermostat. So this thermostat, which was in the car, opens up at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. This one opens at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So it just lets the engine run a little bit cooler. It gives a little bit more of a buffer room before it can start really doing damage when it overheats. Um, so I'm gonna put this thing in and put it back together. Pop! I went ahead and put the air box back in so I can make this new intake. It's literally just gonna be a 90 degree bend with two cuts at it. I also rewired the fans so both of them actually work. Put that back together. And you put this tray back on, tighten those lower hoses. And then we're gonna start it. We're gonna bleed the coolant system and have that all good. That's gonna make some awesome wish noises. That side is really good. I'm gonna put the clamps on the lower radiator hose full of coolant, start her up, bleed her. This bad boy right here is an awesome little device that helps you bleed coolant without making a mess. Pretty much it's this big jug that actually attaches to the radiator cap. It allows the coolant level to be higher than the rest of the motor so all the air will come out here. Once you're done bleeding it, you stick this thing in there, you clog the hole, you pull it off, and you're done. And I never really realized how much air this turbo pushes out. It's insane. That thing works so well. The thermostat opened, the fans kicked on, Both the fans are working now. No leak from the turbo, no leak from anything over there that I messed with, so things almost ready. The coupler has arrived. So we can now make the other side of the intercooler piping. Routing this side is a little bit less obvious. I think what I'm gonna do after looking around, I'm gonna run a 45 off of this. So there'll be the end of the pipe right about there and then do a portion of a 180 straight into the intercooler. No, I have a I have a 90 degree grab with that. So this is complete luck, but pretty sure I can make this side with just a single 45 degree. Comes up from the turbo, comes down right here, and it'll line up straight there. I just have to trim some on each side and then we're good. It's like I need to shorten it a little bit. It's like I need to shorten it quite a bit. And just like that, the other side is in. Look at how perfectly this intercooler with these couplers fits around this radiator. On this side, it is actually touching, but it's touching the hose clamp, so it should be fine. And on this side, it's barely not touching. This is the perfect intercooler for Miatas. One, the one thing I wanna fix when I go to pull the engine, put the new engine in and redo the turbo kit, is just clean up this mess of lines. As you can tell, it's kind of a mess of hoses, and that's that's the one thing that really bugs me, so. But, we have 
and a complete sealed intercooler. So let's turn on the car. She definitely needs a new tune. She can barely idle. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh God. I'm sorry, baby. It's hard to tell if it actually sounds any different without load on it. So we have to get out and drive it. Since it idled like garbage, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the tune a little bit before we drive it. It seemed like it was leaning out quite a bit. It was running at like 22 AFRs. So I'm just gonna put some more fuel in it. So this is the fuel table. Right now at idle, we're in those four cells. I just click these cells. I add a little bit of fuel by pushing the up arrow. And then I apply and save on the ECU. Which well, she doesn't like for a second, but now it's idling a little bit better in the 15s instead of the 20s. So we're getting there. Hell yeah, much better. It works pretty good, but I mean. Definitely sounds different with the new intercooler piping and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the sound that the blow off valve is making yeah. now. Yeah, it sounds really cool. That one's way nicer than mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a got sneeze. A little, yeah, it's got a little bit of a sneeze now. <laughs> That's so cool. It didn't, it didn't used to do that. Yeah, the tune's a little off, but... That's not too, I don't think it's dangerously off. 14 AFRs at five pounds of boost probably isn't ideal. Yeah, probably. It's a little lean. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, like it's 14 AFR until it hits full boost and then it goes down to 12s. Huh. So, should probably use a new retune. But like, if I blow up the motor, who cares? So I'm getting a new one in like yeah. a week, so. Yeah. Well guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I'm really happy with the results. Obviously I do need to fix the intake and we're gonna have to get it retuned, but I think we're just gonna keep it here for now. Intercooler is definitely bigger. It definitely flows better, sounds better. Everything that we wanted to accomplish has been accomplished. I learned a bunch considering this was the first uh, aluminum welding I've been doing, first intercooler kit I've made. So hopefully you guys do like the new sound, hopefully like the new look. On camera, you can barely see it. You just see a little M. That's all you see. When we pull this motor and when we're like doing engine based stuff, we're gonna be doing some ducting for the intercooler and the radiator. That's gonna help intake temps and just the cooling temps a lot. So we'll do that, but for now we're just leaving it like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please give it a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, give it a dislike. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Subscribe. And 
Peace out. Goodbye. Yo, we gained so many Patreons in the last couple of days that I had to extend this outro by 10 seconds because otherwise the names just scrolled by so fast you couldn't read them. All I want to say is thank you guys so much. Um, this bus is going to be so sweet when it's done.